This is a out of box application created using the Visual Studio template for ASP.NET Web API. And I am using .NET version 7 here. When we create this application, by default, it comes up with Open API or Swagger specification. And for that, it adds the Swagger Gen extension method for adding all the Swagger related items into the dependency injection. And then it uses the use swagger and use swagger API extension method for the web application object for adding the middleware necessary for showing up the swagger UI. When we run this, the swagger UI usually shows up as shown here. But one of the thing missing here is, let's say for example, if this application is authenticated via an API key or an authentication token, there is no way to pass this value here, especially if the value is through HTTP header. If the value is through query string, it is easy to pass, but if it is through HTTP header or cookie, it is impossible to pass through this UI. And also it is not very clear from the Swagger documentation itself, what kind of authentication that we are going to use. So that is what I'm going to demonstrate today, how we can configure that so that we can show not only what is the authentication scheme, but also pass the authentication values, whether it is API key or token through query string or header, and I'm going to use only header example here because query string is a little bit easier and how you can pass that and then use that on the server. Now I'm not going to use complete end-to-end -end authentication implementation here. I'm just going to show how a authentication token pass through header can be available on the application. So for that, let's just go ahead and open the weather forecast controller. And inside of get method, let's try to access the HTTP header authorization. And if the authorization header is missing, then we can just return a 401 unauthorized. So what we can do is if request.header dot contains key authorization if it does not contain authorization then we can return unauthorized now once we return unauthorized we cannot use this i enumerable anymore instead of that we have to use something like an action result and then we can use the type of enumerable of weather forecast because that's our ultimate return type. Otherwise, I'm just going to do a console dot right line and I'm going to get the authorization header and print it out. So I can do request dot headers and then here I can provide authorization just to show the value that we're going to pass is going to match. Now, if we run this now, Given that we do not have an option in the Swagger UI to pass the authentication header, this request right now is going to generate a 401 unauthorized. And we can see here we are getting 401 unauthorized. Now let's go and fix this and both in terms of contract definition as well as implementation, let's add the necessary code in the add Swagger gen to provide authentication information. So what we can do is for that, we can use the overload of add Swagger Gen, which uses the action with Swagger Gen options. And we can do so the first thing we have to do is we have to add a security definition. So we can do C dot add security definition and we have to provide a name for that and we can provide any name 
for this purpose so we can i'm just going to say auth as a name and then next thing we have to pass the open api security scheme object so for that we can use open api security scheme and open api security scheme is part of microsoft.openapi.models i'm just going to get rid of it and i'm just going to add the namespace to the class next for the open api security scheme there are a few items that I need to pass. Now, the first property for Open API Security Scheme that we are going to provide is name, which is a required property. And name is the name of the header query or cookie parameter to be used. So here, we are going to use the same name, which is auth. The next thing that we need to provide is a required parameter in which is the location of API key. And for the location of API key, we can either have header, cookie, query, or path, which is the path of the HTTP endpoint. In our case, we are going to use header. But as you can see, you have four options to pass the authentication token or API key. The next one that we have to pass is type which is again another required parameter and it's the type of the security scheme which can be api key http or to or open id connect and in our case since we are using a uh, auth token we can just use http as type the next thing we need to pass is the scheme which is another required parameter and the scheme is the name of the http authorization scheme to be used in the authorization header. So this one for us is going to be bearer. Finally, a non-required field, which is also good to provide is a description. Description is something which is going to show up in the Swagger UI as well as in Swagger documentation. And this is going to help people to understand how to pass a token. So we can say a one time token example is bearer space one two three something some token so that is the first thing we need to define and after defining the security definition the next thing we have to do is add the security requirement so we need to do a dot add security requirement and security requirement takes an object of open API security requirement. So we're just going to create this object. And this object, the security requirement you can see here is nothing but a dictionary of required schemes. The key must correspond to the scheme defined through add security definition. And here we have used open security scheme. So that will be our key. So here for the key value part, what we have to do is first let's create the dictionary and then for the key we are going to use a new open api security scheme because that's exactly what we used here and here we are going to provide reference which is nothing but an instance of open api reference and for the open api reference we are going to pass the id and it has to match this name here so we are going to provide auth and then finally we'll pass the type which is nothing but the reference type and in our case the reference type is a security scheme so we are going to pass that let me just intend this and next after creating this i need to pass the value and value is nothing but a i list of strings so i'm just going to provide a new list of string here that's all and that's about it and once i am done with this now if i run the application there are a couple of things going to show up in the swagger documentation the first thing is now the definition has an authorized so in terms of contract the user knows there is an authorization mechanism and when i click on this we can see that the authorization is http based it's bearer 
and here is an example of how to pass so for us we can just pass the value because bearer will be added by this one and once we click on authorize it is now added this particular token into the swagger ui and until unless i log out it will be available throughout the execution of any of the api behind the scene and at this point if i go and try it out and execute i am not seeing a 401 anymore if we go to the console output we can see the http header has been printed out here the authorization header which is bearer and space the token and that is what we have printed here, we have printed the authorization header, which is bearer and the token. So after that, if we have an authentication middleware, it should be able to extract this authorization header and perform any such authorization that is needed to pop. So if I go here, if I come down, we can see that the security scheme is available. Type is HTTP, a description and scheme is bearer. So this is the documentation which can be used by automated HTTP client generation tool to identify that the authorization scheme is available and this is the particular authorization scheme as well as whoever is reading this open API documentation, they can understand. So this is a very useful feature provided by Swagger, especially if an API is authenticated. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.